Okay, so today we are going to talk about acute diarrhea. Diarrhea is any change in the frequency or consistency of stools. Diarrhea less than two weeks is acute. Diarrhea lasting more than four weeks is chronic. In between, it can be either acute or chronic. If a patient presents to you with acute diarrhea less than two weeks duration, the first thing that you need to do is you have to see whether there are red flags present or not. What are those red flags that you have to look for? Is there bloody diarrhea or is there abdominal pain or temperature is greater than 38 degrees or patient is immunocompromised? Is age greater than 70 years or patient is dehydrated? These are the red flags that you have to look for. If these red flags are absent, then all you need to do is you have to give symptomatic therapy because if these red flags are absent, you do not need to investigate this patient. You do not need to give any antibiotics. All you need to do is wait and watch and give fluids. Most probably it's a viral etiology. Most commonly, most of the gastroenteritis are due to viral etiology and they just get better without any antibiotics, without any investigations. You give fluid therapy and preferred route of fluid therapy is oral. You can also give antidiarrheals. It's fine to give antidiarrheals in a mild to moderate gastroenteritis. You can give loperamide. You can give bismuth subsalicylate if needed. What loperamide does is loperamide decreases the motility of gut and subsalicylates also reduce the motility of gut, therefore reducing the frequency of diarrheal episodes. Now, if the red flags are present, then you have to see whether this patient was using any antibiotics or there was hospital admission. If the patient comes to you with diarrhea and gives you history that one week back he was admitted in hospital for a treatment of a resistant UTI for which he was given antibiotic course, it is most probably Clostridium difficile which is causing diarrhea. So what you do is you go for Clostridium difficile PCR. If Clostridium difficile PCR is positive, then you have to treat Clostridium difficile. Oh, what are those antibiotics that can cause Clostridium difficile diarrhea? Those antibiotics are clindamycin, ampicillin, amoxicillin, cephalosporin, second generation, third generation. These are the antibiotics that can cause Clostridium difficile diarrhea. If Clostridium difficile PCR is positive, you have to treat it with metronidazole. If there is, if patient does not get better or there is recurrence, you have to treat that again with metronidazole and you reserve the second line drug vancomycin for severe cases. You reserve vancomycin for a patient who has clostridium difficile diarrhea and has fewer leukocytosis, acute renal failure or toxic megacolon. So vancomycin is reserved for serious cases. Other than that, vancomycin can never be given IV because if you give vancomycin intravenously, it cannot cross uh, blood gut barrier and it cannot enter gut. So you need to give vancomycin orally in severe cases and it acts in gut. It does not get absorbed in blood. It acts in gut and it kills all the clostridium difficile. Other than that, in second line, you can also use fidexomycin, but it is less effective than vancomycin. And last line treatment of Clostridium difficile is fecal transplant. Now, if there was no antibiotic use or no hospital admission, then you have to investigate this patient. Usually, you do not need to do any investigations in diarrhea and even the worst of the diarrheas get better with simple fluid therapy. But in few cases when the patient is not getting better or there are severe symptoms, severely dehydrated patient, severe bloody diarrhea that is not getting any better, you have to go for investigation. Or sometimes it happens that patient in which you are giving symptomatic therapy, this patient did not get better and this patient comes back to you with no improvement after seven days and you have to investigate this patient now. How do you investigate? You can do fecal RBCs, fecal WBCs. You can do stool cultures and other than that, there is a low yield test stool ova and parasite. You can do stool ova and parasite if there is a travel to endemic areas where certain parasites are endemic and are prone and notorious to cause diarrhea or there is a certain waterborne outbreak in a community and many people are get, having diarrhea. So you can investigate with stool ova and parasite to see those parasites or protozoans that can cause diarrhea. 
when you are done with investigations there can be four outcomes if rbcs are present if wbcs are present it means that this is bloody diarrhea with all the pus in it organisms causing such type of diarrhea are invasive inflammatory they invade gut they erode gut on stool cultures what you can see is enterohemorrhagic stain of e coli o157 h7 salmonella shigella or campylobacter i'll discuss these bacteria in a while sometimes in results you get a profile in which rbcs are absent wbcs are absent it means that this was not an invasive organism this was non inflammatory organism an organism was not eroding gut it was not invading the walls of gut and it was most probably a toxin produced by uh, certain bacteria that can cause this type of watery diarrhea non inflammatory diarrhea the organisms causing non inflammatory diarrhea are enterotoxigenic strain of e coli vibrio cholera bacillus cereus clostridium perfringens are toxins of staph aureus can cause non inflammatory diarrhea other than that on stool ova and parasite film you can find out organisms like giardia giardia is most common protozoan causing uh, acute and even chronic diarrhea entamoeba histolytica in immunocompromised people cryptosporidium in patients of hiv lastly there can be a situation that rbcs are present wbcs are present and you think that this patient is having an invasive organism which is eroding gut which is destroying gut wall causing blood and pus in stool but stool cultures are negative ova and parasite film is negative and patient is not getting better in such situation you need to go for work up of chronic diarrhea in medical illnesses like inflammatory bowel disease you do colonoscopy and you do proper work up of chronic diarrhea to understand chronic diarrhea work up check out my video on chronic diarrhea so these are the four situations that you can encounter sometimes culture reports are not back and patient situation is bad patient is severely dehydrated patient has severe systemic symptoms patient has symptoms of dysentery bloody diarrhea and patient is or patient is immunocompromised in such patients you can give empiric antibiotic therapy with ciprofloxacin and metronidazole till the time culture reports are back and you can start on the specific therapy but most of the time patient do not need any antibiotics patient get better without antibiotics with simple fluid therapy coming towards the causative agents of diarrhea what are those organisms that can cause diarrhea we will divide it into two groups one all those that cause inflammatory invasive or bloody diarrhea and second group that cause a non inflammatory non invasive and non bloody diarrhea inflammatory or invasive diarrhea is caused by campylobacter that comes from poultry and campylobacter is most common cause of invasive diarrhea salmonella it also comes from poultry and eggs and can cause bloody diarrhea e coli hemorrhagic strain of e coli o157 h7 comes from uncooked meat poorly cooked meat especially from hamburgers and one thing that you must know about e coli is that you cannot give antibiotics in whenever diarrhea is caused by e coli because it can cause destruction of uh, bacterial walls leading to spread of toxin in blood resulting in hemolytic uremic syndrome so there is risk of hemolytic uremic syndrome with e coli and tamiba histolytica it, it is a protozoan that comes from water and it is common in homosexuals and in immuno immunocompromised people like hiv patients and aids patients shigella it comes from contaminated water or contaminated food and there is also a risk of hemolytic uremic syndrome in shigella as well what are those bacteria that cause non inflammatory diarrhea enterotoxic diarrhea are non invasive diarrhea non bloody diarrhea they are mostly the ones that secrete toxins staph aureus toxin comes from salads salad that was kept for hours and now patient ate that and after that patient presented with vomiting of within 6 hours there is vomiting predominant bacillus cereus most probably with chinese rice fried rice they had those rice at night and now in early morning they reheated those rice and they are now having diarrhea that is bacillus cereus 
vibrio cholera vibrio cholera cause excessive loss of water excessive loss of fluids from body even 10 10 liters in a day uh, and it comes with contaminated water water that has been contaminated with feces enterotoxigenic e coli it is also called traveler's diarrhea it spreads from water and it is known to be prevalent in central america giardia giardia comes from unfiltered water unboiled water and mostly it's associated with camping trip giardia can cause acute diarrhea fatty stools bad smell and it can sometimes have a chronic course if untreated in and in that chronic course it can mimic celiac disease because there is loss of uh, fat in stools and it can present just as if someone is having celiac disease in summary if a patient comes to you with acute diarrhea the first thing that you need to see is whether there are red flags present or not if the red flags are absent all you need to do is you go for symptomatic therapy and most commonly it's viral etiology you have to give fluids in fluids oral route is better than intravenous route other than that you can give uh, anti diarrheals like lopramide bismuth subsalicylate to reduce the frequency of stools if needed if red flags are present our patient is not improving that you need to investigate the first thing is whether there was antibiotic use or hospital admission if there was antibiotic use patient was treated for pneumonia or uti in the last week or within two weeks and now has diarrhea look for clostridium difficile do cd pcr treat it with metronidazole if does not get better reserve vancomycin for severe patient and fecal transplant as a last line therapy investigate with fecal wbcs and rbc stool cultures ova and parasite and now if rbcs are present wbcs are present it, it means it's most probably an invasive organism and these are those organism causing inflammatory diarrhea if rbcs are absent wbcs are present no blood no pus in stool it means it is most probably a non inflammatory organism one of these stool ova and parasite can show the organisms from like giardia most commonly other than that entamoebae stylitica cryptosporidium and sometimes rbcs are present wbcs are present there is blood and pus and patient is not getting better stool cultures are negative o and parasite are negative look for chronic diarrhea go for colonoscopy and look for inflammatory bowel disease so this was acute diarrhea check out my video on chronic diarrhea thank you very much